Hey Schiller, why are you making faces like that? Well, it's really simple. It's because I'm an extinguished gentleman. <laughs> Welcome back to Team G503. I am Scott Schiller, your host. And in this video, I was kind of trying to come up with something corny and goofy to start the video with. I think I succeeded at that. But in this video, we're going to be installing the bracket that holds the fire extinguisher on the inside of the cowl there on the driver's side. Uh, I'll show you the bolt locations and where everything goes so you can get a good pattern if it's not on your Jeep already. Check it out. I think it'll be helpful for you. The fire extinguisher bracket I am using is part number A693 and is the double banded type. The earlier ones would have had a single band. I want you to notice also you can buy the fire extinguisher foot set from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts if you only had the bracket. The fasteners are size 12, 24 by 5 8 round head machine screws with coinciding lock washers and nuts. I will be pulling all of my measurements off the center seam here on the axe and shovel indents and I'm using a large drywall square to do so because it can stand by itself here on the front foot rest and line up perfectly with that center seam. You can also use just an ordinary carpenter square like this. It's just a little bit more difficult to hold up as you're taking your measurements off the front or the back side of it. You could use the measurements on the square itself, but I'm going to double check it with the tape here as shown, and I'll touch that backside of that square, that seam, and I'm going to measure out 14 inches from that seam for my first lower hole, and then up from the top side of the front foot rest, 4 and 5 sixteenths inches. After I've got my measurements checked, I'll go ahead and take a Sharpie, and I'll put a point right at that lower mark, which would be the bottom leg or standoff on the backside of the bracket. Try and keep your tape and your square that's on the bottom at a 90 degree angle so it's straight up and down from your 14 inch mark. After you've got that bottom mark, take the bracket itself and line that up with the first mark that you made with your Sharpie. You can use the holes and look at the top of the cowl to line up straight up and down at a 90 degree angle towards the bottom of the footrest. We're going to check this later with a square just to be sure, but go ahead and use your Sharpie and put a point right in the center of the holes on the standoffs or the feet of the bracket. It's hard to see from this camera angle, but I will show you the whole bracket before we get done here. I've got the first hole set at 4 and 5 sixteenths, and then I've measured the bracket itself, and then the next measurement to the next hole is 5 and 3 quarters, and then to the top is 3 and a half. So the shorter distance of the legs goes towards the top of the cowl. Again, I will show you this in a second. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole exactly on my little sharpie marks. This will help when I use the larger drill bit so it doesn't jump on the sheet metal and damage my finish or actually put the hole where it doesn't belong. Now I'm going to use a 736 inch bit. That should give me enough room if there's any sort of discrepancy or adjustment I need to make when I install the fasteners. Go ahead and take your time. Make sure you're at a 90 degree angle to your work and drill the six holes. It's going to cause quite a mess and a lot of little metal shavings. We'll clean those up in a minute too. Little metal shavings are definitely pesky and they like to stick in your hands and they like to fly everywhere. So make sure you wear your safety glasses just so that they don't get in your eye. Once you get all six of your holes drilled, shop back everything up, get all those little metal shavings out of there. A clean work area is a safe work area. Let me show you this bracket here full screen now so you can see the orientation. Notice the width here and the width here. The shorter goes towards the top. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to line it up against those brackets one last time. Again, I'll have a little bit of movement in there for the fasteners. With the camera switched around here to the inside of the tub, here's the hook side and that's going to go on top and the bottom side of the 90 degree angle side with a hole in it will go to the bottom. I'll check my holes just to make sure they line up and they do and then I can go ahead and install my fasteners. I'm going to install one of the bolts through the outside. The head goes on the outside of the cowl and the machine then comes into the inside of the bracket as shown here. But I'm going to install one in the middle because it acts as kind of like a little lever so it holds the bracket inside the Jeep and you can kind of wiggle it back and forth to get all your holes lined up. Then comes the lock washers. I'm not going to joke with you and tell you a story. These are a little bit difficult to get in on the inside rail here up against the support. So just use your fingers and kind of manipulate it in there. If you drop it a couple of times it's not a big deal. It's going to take a little bit of patience. 
inches. Then comes the nut, and this is even more fun to get on there. I'm going to show you something that I rigged up, and you've probably got tools in your own toolbox that will help you. A magnetic nut driver will come in absolutely handy to you, and I'll show you exactly how to use it. You take the magnetic driver. This one's a DeWalt one that I, can, I use for my cordless drill, but I can spin it with my fingers or hold it with my fingers, and you insert the nut and then the lock washer on top, and that should enable you to get inside some of those tight spots and make it pretty easy to attach the lock washer and the nut. Don't tighten fully any of the fasteners just yet. Get yourself a nice slotted screwdriver, one that fits the outside head there nicely so it doesn't slip. And I'm using a quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a 3 8 drive socket that will enable me to get in behind those feet and those areas nice and easily and tighten those bolts fully. You want to really get these nice and tight. Hold from the outside with your screwdriver and then tighten the nuts from the inside with your ratchet. There's a little bit of movement now in the holes we drilled, so as you're tightening these, make sure your bracket stays in line. Lastly, I'll use some of my 33070 spray paint in the rattle can from Ron Fitzpatrick G-Parts just to go ahead and spray the fasteners. I'm not priming in this video because I primed and painted the whole bracket and the fasteners before I install it, so I'm just going to give the tops where they're a little bit silver, a light dusting with the 33070, and it's going to look real nice, as well as be protected from rusting. I'll go on the outside and hit the outside fast and then I'll show you how the finished product came out. Looking underneath here, again, that flat 90 degree with the hole in it goes towards the floorboards, and then at the top, the hook goes towards the top. And you can see I've cut up the inside here of the fasteners. Take a look on the outside here, and here's the outside screw heads. I've got the slots all clocked, or they're all facing the same direction up and down. I think that looks finished and nice, even though it probably wouldn't have came that way from the factory. And we're all set to go on to the next project. And there you have it. Brackets all installed, all painted up nice. If you've been watching this series as I've been doing these bolt-ons, I'm going to say it one more time. I've got two coats of primer and two coats of top coat, the 33070 uh, Low Luster Olive Drab from Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts on everything before I put it all together. And when I'm done with all the bolt-ons, I'm going to give it a nice scuffing, clean it all up real nice, and shoot everything down one last time just so everything's coated evenly. Uh, that spray those rattle spray cans, once again, the color in there matches perfect to the stuff that I originally sprayed without a gallon. It's been months, so it's, there's no variation. You can use it to touch up. If you'd like to follow along with the what we're doing with the 1943 Willis MB rebuild here on Team G503, you can click that subscribe button, and a lot of you have lately, and I thank you for your support, and I'm inviting you to do such. Also, there's a little bell down there that you can click that will notify you when Team G5 releases its latest video. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe, and... I really don't want the fire to go. I want the fire to grow. But that's what we did today with the extinguisher. Keep it safe. Happy jeeping.